last week, I started talking about the topic of childhood trauma. And in that video, I'm going to leave a link to that, uh, to that video in the description of this one. So if you haven't seen the video, you can go back to it. I started talking about childhood trauma. I shared some experience from my own life. And I, in that video, I shared the tool of uh, using and doing inner child work as the beginning of the process to start healing childhood trauma. Now, since that video, I got a lot of feedback from people and one viewer specifically sent me a message and I wanted to address it in this video. She asked me, I had shared in the previous video, I had shared a bit about childhood abuse pertaining to sexual abuse. And so this viewer sent in a message and asked if that tool, the inner child work that I had talked about in that video, if it pertained to people who hadn't gone through sexual abuse but had some other form of trauma. So I wanted to start this video out by answering that question and the answer is yes. The first video, when I talked about childhood trauma, I don't just mean to talk about uh, sexual trauma. I was only sharing my experience and the experience of many others that I've, that I've kind of be, been in touch with since. But when I talk about trauma, I'm talking about any sort of trauma. It doesn't have to be sexual in nature. So it could be a very painful childhood where you were physically abused maybe, uh, maybe a family situation where you were beaten, uh, emotionally abused. So the trauma can be of any origin. So that was in the first video, the inner child work, I talked about it then. So go ahead and go back and see that one uh, if you like to. The second one, I'm going to continue the conversation. I started upon it in the first uh, video also. I talked about, in the first video, psychological dissociation and how we go through psychological dissociation many times when, we go, when we're going through a period of trauma in our lives. And in this video, I wanted to touch on a different type of dissociation. It's spiritual dissociation. And this type of dissociation is talked a lot less about than the psychological dissociation. And this type of dissociation is very common according to shaman, the shamanic worldview or according to shamanism. And this type of dissociation occurred in me also. And it's something that I've been healing. And so I wanted to shoot this video and share um, the progress and what's happened in my life since I started using the shamanic view to see uh, trauma and to, to learn how to heal trauma through some of their tools. So in this video, I'm going to first start talking about spiritual dissociation, what it is, uh, what happens, how it occurs. And then the second part of the video, I'm going to share a shamanic practice that helped me heal through some pretty severe trauma. So here we go. The first part of the video then. What is spiritual dissociation? So when we go through a period of trauma in our lives, what happens frequently is that we may mentally dissociate uh, from that phenomenon. This is known in psychology. But what happens also when we're going through a period of trauma, when, when something really painful happens in our lives, at the moment that that is occurring, frequently we will have spiritual dissociation. That is, a part or a fragment of our souls can actually leave us in order to protect us from experiencing more severe trauma. And the way that this was explained to me is that soul uh, loss or soul dissociation is a protective mechanism that your soul does on purpose. So part of your soul will leave you, part of your essence will leave you as a protective mechanism so that your psyche doesn't implode on itself, so that you can survive in the situation that you're in when the trauma is occurring. Now, when you suffer soul loss, as shamans call it, when you suffer soul loss, in the beginning it could be protective, but then as you grow up, this dissociation, this part of you that's lost, that's somewhere out there, <laughs> it begins to really weigh heavily on you. You can feel like, you literally have something missing in your life. You can feel depressed. You can feel chronic fatigue. There are a bunch of symptoms that come with soul loss or soul dissociation. So that's the first part to just discuss a little bit what this spiritual or, or soul loss is and why it happens. It happens to protect you so that you can survive energetically in a period of trauma. But as you are growing up, 
as you are moving on with life, you can't really move on with life <laughs> if you've had a soul dissociation or soul loss because there's literally a part of you that's missing somewhere out there. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit about soul loss and how shamans see it. Now, the way that shamans see soul loss is they see it as a kind of spiritual crisis or a spiritual disease, although the disease is, is a, a very strong term, but they see it as a crisis. So when a shaman looks at you and sees you, they are very frequently, in order for you to heal, they're looking for parts of you that are not with you and trying to integrate them into your, back into your system, okay? So that's the first part of the video, soul loss associated with trauma that can be sexual or it can be any type of childhood trauma that you have experienced, all right? Now, now on to the shamanic tool that really helped me heal through my own um, soul loss and through my own childhood trauma. And that's the shamanic practice called soul retrieval, all right? Now, I, um, I did this shamanic practice myself. Uh, I'm an experienced meditator and also an energy healer. So soul retrieval was something that was very easy for me to do on myself. If it's not easy, I'm going to explain a way in which you can start doing soul retrieval. If it is not easy for you to do by yourself or if you feel like you're not getting any results, I advise you to look for a healer that does this type of work so they can help you, okay? But here's a little DUI, <laughs> a little do-it-yourself soul retrieval. How do you start this process? So in the shamanic worldview, in order for you to heal, we've got to find those soul parts that were lost in, at the moment of trauma. So what you're going to do, the DUI soul retrieval version, is you're going to start um, talking to the universe, talking to life, asking questions. I love the process of asking questions. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit in meditation or just in contemplation and you're going to close your eyes. You're going to have a journal next to you at all times because automatic writing is a really important tool while you're going through this process of soul retrieval and also I talked about it in the last video, going through the process of inner child work. But you always want to have a journal with you because it's really important as certain memories or experiences are coming up for you to integrate, automatic writing is an amazing way to help that process move along more quickly. Okay, so you're going to sit in meditation, you're going to close your eyes and you're just going to start asking the universe, life, uh, if you believe in angels, you're going to ask them to help you, your guides, you're going to ask the spiritual world to come and help you and cocoon you and protect you as you're going through this discovering of trauma, as you're going through this healing of trauma that you need to go through, all right? So you're going to sit down, close your eyes, ask for this protective cocoon to come around you, and then you're going to use one of your most powerful gifts on this earth, and that is the power of your intention. So you are going to intend to bring your soul parts back. <laughs> You're literally going to intend to bring back the parts of you that are missing, but you're going to intend to bring them back healed and whole, all right? So why is this important? Because when you dissociate during the traumatic uh, period that you had in your life, when you dissociated, that soul part left and it's still on the other side out there in a wounded state energetically. So you don't want to bring back any energy that's wounded. You want to bring back that part of you after it's healed. <laughs> All right. So the first part is you're just going to sit in meditation and you're going to intend for your healed soul parts to come back to you in divine order. All right. So you're going to set this intention, really strong intention. And then you're going to sit there and you're going to start asking questions very, very broad, open questions. And, you're, and, and this is how one of the questions that could go. You could say, what in me do I need to access and heal? All right, so you're going to ask this question. What happened to me in my childhood, in this lifetime or in another lifetime? What has happened to me that I need to see now in order to heal? You're going to start asking these probing questions. What happened to me that I need to see what happened to me that I need to heal? What pain is in my past that I need my unconscious mind to bring up to the surface so I may see it? Okay. 
you're going to start asking these questions and then you're going to do a little life review. You're going to take yourself back into the past and do a life review. Now, this is really important to bring up and that is that shamans and pretty much any spiritual tradition in the world, but also science, considers time nonlinear. So sometimes people will say to me, you know, do I really have to go to the past? Do I have to go to the past? Can't I just look forward and just let, leave the past alone? Leave, let bygones be bygones? Well, that's not really possible. And it's not possible because time is non-local. Okay, so time is not linear. So there is no such thing as the past that was way back there and the future that's way over there and the present that's, that's here. Everything is in the present moment. So begin to think of time as the past, the present, and the future superimposed on top of each other. All you have is now, but it's in the now that you access the past and the future. Everything is occurring at the same time. So when you're asking these questions, what do I need to see from my past in order to heal, what you're doing is you're literally changing your life because once you heal the past, because they're all superimposed on top of each other, once you heal the past, you immediately change your future. <laughs> you change your present and you change your future. Everything is occurring at the same time. Okay, so it's tremendously important for you to start seeing time in a non-linear way. Okay, so as you're going through these questions, as you begin asking these questions with your eyes closed, what do I need to see? What happened to me in my childhood that I need to see? You're just going to sit there with your eyes closed and in meditation. You can have music. I like using music during my meditation. So if this is something that, that can work for you, use music. And you're going to sit there and you are going to see what comes up. You're going to see if there's anything in your childhood, any childhood memories that are coming up, any pain that you may know you have back there but you don't really like to access. You're going to have the courage to see it. And then you're going to sit there in meditation a lot of emotion may come up. You may want to cry. You may feel anger. You may, whatever emotion comes up, you let it come up. And when you feel ready, you're going to write all of this down in your journal. What happened, how you felt, uh, what were the participants in all of this, in these scenes, in these memories? What are you feeling right now? What did that child feel at the moment that this trauma happened? You're going to write all of this down, okay? As you start writing, you're literally accessing your wounded inner child, your wounded self, okay? Now, as you access this, you're already starting to heal it because the intention of healing, the awareness towards healing brings energy of healing already. So you're already starting the healing process by just having the courage to sit with your memories, with your pain, and having the courage to say, I am going to let all of this come up because I'm ready to heal and move on, okay? So that's the first part of it. You're going to keep writing and writing and writing. And after you feel like you're done kind of reliving or going through this process of bringing these memories up to the surface, when you feel like you're done and that you've accessed what you need to access, then you're going to move on to the second part of the exercise. And that is you are now going to ask the universe to bring that soul part back to you healed and whole. <laughs> and the way that I like doing this is I like doing a visualization, a trance meditation, where I kind of fly up over a cloud and I just kind of land on the cloud. It's this little white fluffy cloud. I land on the cloud and the, sky is, the, uh, the sun is hitting me in the face and the blue sky above. And I just stay in this openness, open uh, kind of visual situation. I, I stay there. And then what I like doing is I will call forth my, the, my soul part in a healed state. So you'll see that once you have processed all of this energy from the past, when you go up to this meditation where you're standing on a cloud, on a beautiful white cloud, you're going to see your soul part come to you in a healed state. So in my own example, and giving you an example from my own life, when I started to do the work, uh, when I started to look for the soul part that was missing in me, what happened was I found a little girl and she was really scared. You know, I, I have a, um, I, my traumatic experiences, one of them had to do with sexual abuse. So I went and I found that little girl that had been abused and I found her, I talked to her. This was in one meditation. I asked her what she needed. I asked her what needed to happen for her to heal. I did all of this and I wrote all this down. And then in a subsequent meditation, I sat down again and then I went up to my cloud. 
I went up to my cloud once I felt like I had processed the energy. I went up to my cloud and I asked the heel soul part to come forth. And what showed up was this beautiful little girl. And she was happy and just free. And she was ready to come back with me. She was ready to come home to me. And so I welcomed her. When you're doing this retrieval process, you're welcoming the soul part. And what, the way that I like to work with this is welcome the soul part into your heart chakra. It's, it's my favorite chakra. <laughs> it's a chakra I work with a lot. But the, the, the heart chakra is your grand connector. So when you're working to with retrieving parts of yourself that feel lost, and it doesn't have to be just in your childhood. You could have gone through a trauma yesterday or, or last week. You could be going through trauma related to war or conflict. It doesn't have to be something that happened to you in your childhood. It could be something that happened to you very recently, but that caused a, a part of you to leave you. You can do this work all the same. So you're going to recover that soul part and you're going to ask it to join you once it's healed and has gone through a beautiful process of light and healing. And then you're going to welcome it into your heart. And literally what happens is you will start feeling differently immediately. You feel lighter. You feel more joyful. You feel more complete. And so when you feel more complete, now you're going to continue this work with your newly integrated soul part, but it's going to be a work that's lighter. Every day after that soul retrieval process, I asked my soul parts if it still needed anything or if everything was okay. I would sit in meditation and I would ask if everything was okay within myself, you know, with all parts, now that they were together, if everything was okay or if um, there needed to be any other work done. And I started to feel lighter and lighter and lighter, and that's how I healed. So there you go. That's a kind of a DUI soul retrieval <laughs> process that you can start doing at home. And if you feel like you need the help of a more specialized healer, then reach out to a healer to help you with this. Soul retrieval. I, I'm really become a fan of shamanic practices, of shamanism in general, and especially this process of soul retrieval. It has helped me so much. In one to two sessions of soul retrieval, it was like I've done years of work, uh, spiritual work, and it's, it's felt really, really amazing. So. There you go. Uh, DUI Soul Retrieval. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or want to reach out to me about uh, childhood trauma or any trauma that you may be going through right now, you know where to find me. It's at info at christina-lopes.com. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. Much love to you. Bye. Bye.